that's one of the biggest controversies of the game. Welcome to another edition of Fun and Games, your weekly delve into all the big games across this global planet of ours. Mossy and Robbo with you. And Robbo, all eyes are centred at the moment over there in Peking, otherwise known as Beijing, for the IAAF World Championships. Yes, it's the World Championships of Athletics. Mossy, it's important to point that out because it's been confused this week for the IWA, well, the FINA World Championships of Swimming and Diving. And let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Regardez cette image. Le passage de la rivière. La tête la première dans la rivière. Well, Rob, I tell you what, that reminds me, not a steeplechase, that reminds me of Aussie Madison Keeney over there in the uh, FINA Diving Championships when she took on that miraculous dive that looked like this. Yeah, so what about that, Mossy? Uh, a little bit uh, disappointed the Russian judges scored that harshly uh, for uh, Rolanda Bell, the Panamanian that did uh, have a little dip into the creek or the water jump as it's known. Um, but man, look at this, look at these photos that we see here. This is amazing. Um, she, look, we should point out she got up, she dusted herself off, uh, grabbed a towel, dried herself off a little bit and finished the race. Uh, and that's very, very impressive. When you've taken a head first tumble into the water trap, quite spectacular, I like that. Uh, and you can back it up. I don't think she quite won her heat, but she certainly finished and uh, didn't disgrace herself at all. And a massive shout out to Cal for taking all those pictures over there, which is fantastic indeed. So let's continue this best from the nest. And of course, it is a big Ni Hao Australia right. as we uh, look into this. Um, the opening ceremony, mate. Um, huge, huge uh, things laid out there, including Jackie Chan. Yes, well, it's important. We're at the halfway mark of the uh, world champs now. Let's go back and see where it did start. In the bird's nest, Mossy, it's so famous there. The 2008 Olympic Games, we saw it. Uh, it was amazing. And what they did inside the bird's nest the other night was amazing as well. They rehashed the old song, Beijing welcomes you, and Jackie Chan himself sung all three verses of it. Let's have a look at it. So there you go. That was the video from the original campaign, uh, 2008. Beijing welcomes you, and Mossy, uh, look, sharing a breath and breaking new records. Who could script that any better? What a great way and a great tone to set for the 15th IAAF World Championship. It's fantastic to see Jackie Chan really bouncing back from that horrible performance in the remake of The Karate Kid. Now let's uh, jump into the women's 10,000 metres. Wasn't that a fantastic event? Well, it was. There was, a, there was a, it was an event within an event, this one, Mossy. There was actually two going on. You'll see here uh, the 9,999 metres. Well, that had an entirely different result set to the 10,000 metres. Molly Huddle, the American... Uh, uh, she's a national champion, national uh, gun, 10,000 metres runner. Here she is, doing the arms up. And uh, on the inside, a girl by the name of Emily Infield, on the infield side, came up and, and bagged that bronze medal and actually got there for the 10,000 metre bronze. Uh, you can see here, disappointment on Huddle's face, and it's fair to say Huddle was indeed in a muddle. And I must say, I don't think she'll ever do that again. Now, one of the highlights for me across the sporting landscape is... I guess the genetic superiority of uh, the gingers out there, and in particular, athletics of these big championships, it's made for us because all the finals are at night. And we've <laughs> seen uh, so far the big jumpers. We've seen Greg Rutherford, uh, the English champion. He's now got the Grand Slam Robo. He does. And we've also got uh, Shawnee Barber, the young Canadian from uh, Toronto, who's uh, got himself a gold medal in the pole vault, taking on this rich tradition in uh, pole vault from, of course, Australia's Steve Hooker. Look, uh, gingers have been jumping well for many, many decades and centuries, Mossy, and it's just coming back to the fore. Quick one about Sean Barber. He calls Toronto his hometown. His, daughter, his dad, George, get this, uh, used to get him on a sawn-off pole and at four years old, he gave him his first pole and they would leap the irrigation ditches of the family farm before they got a proper pit uh, inside an air airport hangar. How's that? Uh, the gingerness is really coming to the fore, like you said. And Greg Rutherford, you will not find a better looking ginger than, uh, than him. And as you said, he got the Grand Slam, European gold, Commonwealth Games gold, Olympic gold, and now World Champs gold. Very special. And mate, there's hope for you yet. Uh, you might consider taking up the jumps. He's never won the KB Games though, has he? 
has not. That's on his list. Now, I'll tell you what, it's really hard to uh, find some currency over there in uh, Beijing. And I know that uh, one of the guys in the Hammer won a gold medal and he, he found himself <laughs> at Canberra at home and uh, it was a cheap one for him. Yes, well, Pavel Fajdek uh, defended his Hammer Throw title. He's a colourful pole. He's a big unit. And, uh, mate, as you do when you win the Hammer Gold Medal at the World Champs, you go out on the piss and you get stark raving drunk. And, uh, look, what happened was, apparently, he's, re he's had this story retold to him. He was getting it out of the cab, realised he didn't have uh, any currency Absolutely on him. Absolutely hammered. All he had was this thing around his neck. And he said, look, well, do you take these? And the cabbie uh, obliged and said, uh, yes, certainly, sir. Uh, happy to take that. And... Uh, what ended up happening was poor old Pavel woke up in the morning, didn't know where he was. Uh, he was, I think, I think he uh, was barely wearing a stitch and he didn't have his gold medal around his neck and he was a bit concerned. Called the Beijing authorities. They're still hunting for it uh, and he's, he's a bit uh, embarrassed on social media. He's been trying to defend himself. But anyway, that's what you get uh, when you get a little bit loose as a hammer thrower. Now, there's a young guy doing well in the sprints. His name, is, a lot of people haven't heard of him. His name's Usain Bolt. Yeah. He won the 100-metre sprint. Uh, a little bit of an upset there over Justin Gatlin. And, uh, mate, in the post-celebrations, uh, in the media pit, he found himself in a little bit of, uh, in a, bit of uh, a situation. He certainly did, but he handled it uh, with a lot of class. And uh, you can see here the, the reporter... Uh, it's halfway through her questioning and then he has to pause because uh, there's a special something that he has to watch. In my title, and that's what I did. You came here to yeah. be a legend. You are already a legend. Could we cut the interview? Is it live? Yeah, okay. So, yes, let's dance. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. El, el, perdón, el himno nacional. And what I love about that one, Robbo, is not the fact that Usain's uh, such an impressed fan of Fun and Games TV, is the fact that the uh, journalist there was actually being her own interpreter. Yes, no, that was, ex that was excellent. And uh, Usain actually sent us a tweet later on. He said, episode three, boys, that's your best yet. Keep them coming. And in what has been touted as one of the uh, Olympic sports in the Dubbo 2024 is, of course, gridiron. And uh, Jared Hayne, does, hasn't he gone well over there in California? Oh, Mossy, the Hayne plane, it's taken off for the second week now, and uh, he's absolutely killing it. So much so, the fans of Jared uh, have actually come up with what is quite a catchy little tune, and uh, you can hear a little grab of it here. California. Jared Hayne! Now Hayne! Look at Jared Hayne! Running over people! Jared Hayne's out! Of foot quickness. Here's an Aussie called the pain plane. Really impressive. Here's an Aussie, and the whole world's watching. Good day, mate. Watching them run in. Oh, that catch. Watching him stiff arm in. A stiff arm yeah. Now let me walk Pretty catchy, isn't it, Robert? So it certainly is. And I'm being told that the uh, 49ers 38 jumper. Uh, if you follow what I'm talking about, there is is absolute uh, is going is going through the roof in terms of sales and popularity down down under uh, here in Rugby Town. Um, <laughs> look, people are just lining up for their Jared Hayne shirts. It looks likely, definite, even that he will get a start now with the 49ers for the season and. Look, can't wait for that first TD from the Hayne plane. Absolutely. Now, Kitty Chiller. She's been over there in Rio because there's been a test event over there in the sailing. Yes, she never likes to miss a test event, uh, Kitty. She was dirty that when she missed. When was the last test event she missed? Well, the uh, triathlon. Uh, she was uh, very upset she missed the triathlon, Aaron Royal qualifying. She was on the turfs, wasn't she? She had a big night on the, uh, on the, um, on the Cadbury, actually. She was testing the samples for the Cadbury, so she had a big night on the Cadbury's. But she got over there for the sailing, never misses the sailing test event, and uh, here she is with boxing kangaroo or BK up above the arms. Uh, it was a great event over there. Mossy, they navigated through a fairly sizable amount of sewerage, um, but they're confident that will get cleaned up. Kitty got stuck in. She rolled up the sleeves. She's, she got some of it out of the way so our sailors could uh, have a clear Well, passage. she's a plumber, isn't she? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I tried. Yeah. That's part of that's a prerequisite of being a modern pentathlete. Oh, absolutely, those starfish indeed. Now let's talk about the water as well, and of course, the kid from Currumbin, the man who grew up in the Currumbin Creek canals, and I'm talking none other than Kenny Wallace, taking out a few gold medals. Yes, Kenny Wallace, he's an absolute champion. Uh, you go to Chugan Surf Lifesaving Club up there on the southern Gold Coast, and he is. I think they've got a statue going up for Kenny very shortly. But Mossy, the canoeists, this is another team that strikes me that they don't have a name. 
Uh, they don't have a team name. They're not the, you know, the uh, Socceroos, the Volley Roos, the, uh, the Boomers. The Starfish. Exactly. Now, what can we come up with? And as I said last time, you love your team names, mate. What have you got for us this time? Well, I started to think about where do you canoe? And when I go canoeing, mate, I go down a creek. And when I think about creeks, I think about platypus. And I think a platypus is perfect. It's an aggressive thing. It can actually kill people. And, uh, but it also has that ability to be, you know, like a stuffed little doll like karat. Crack here, and I think platypus is the perfect name. Can we go with it? Well, the only thing we can, but I need to know is it platypuses or platypi or what is it? Platypies. <laughs> well, there it is. Combining the Aussie pie and, uh, and the platypus. Absolutely. There we go. All right, that's sold. Well, that's all we've got time for this week on Fun and Games TV. And of course, don't forget, it's all fun and games until you get drunk and lose your medal. <laughs>